Welcome back. Today we're going to be reviewing the Tesla wall connector, but this isn't just any Tesla wall connector. This is the J1772 Tesla wall connector. Tesla, for the first time, started selling a wall connector that didn't use its proprietary Tesla connector. This wall connector has the J1772 connector on it, the connector that every other electric vehicle in North America outside of Tesla vehicles uses. Now, Tesla vehicles can use the J1772 connector with the supplied adapter that comes with every Tesla car. So Teslas can use this just fine, but it's for the first time that Tesla is actually selling charging equipment that doesn't use their connector, that uses the industry standard J1772. Now, one thing I have to note, this became available right around November 1st of this year. We immediately bought one. I think on the 2nd, we ordered it. Uh, it's been sitting in the garage here for a couple of weeks now. But then mysteriously, about two and a half weeks later, Tesla pulled it from the website. It's not marked as out of stock, it's gone. And if you try to go to the web page, you get the 404 error message, which means that the web page doesn't exist. So it's kind of baffling that Tesla would make this available for a couple of weeks and then pull it. Uh, perhaps it's a supply chain issue and Tesla realizes they can't make them for a while. So they said rather than uh, have them marked as out of stock, which I, I think they would probably do. I'm just trying to make up excuses here to figure out why they'd make something available and literally about 18 days later, pull it from the website. Uh, we reached out to Tesla for comment, uh, but Tesla being Tesla, they don't talk to members of the media. Uh, when I work for Inside EVs, when I write for Forbes, when I do my own videos on state of charge, I'll reach out to Tesla, but it's futile. They just don't respond. They don't have a PR department. <laughs> they don't have like a media department. And uh, the best you can hope is tweeting Elon Musk and getting an answer, but uh, that's you know a very small probability of that happening. So we don't have answers. We don't know what's going on with this. Maybe you, this is done. You can't buy it anymore, and, and you know we've got a unicorn here. Or maybe uh, maybe it's supply chain issues. Maybe at some point in the future, Tesla's going to reintroduce it and bring it back. Um, it's just kind of weird that they would only sell it for a couple of weeks if that was the plan. So in any event, we're going to do the full review here uh, and with the hopes that this becomes available again. So if people are interested in getting one, at least they'll have the state of charge full review. So that's coming up next. But first, please don't forget, click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any EV and EV charging videos here on State of Charge. So let's first open her up and see exactly what comes in the box and how we would go about installing the wall connector. All right, she's all unboxed. Let's take a look what comes in the box. We have the main unit, which you see here. It's all assembled in one piece. Sometimes when we get uh, charging stations, the faceplate is off and uh, you've got to kind of assemble it. This is all completely connected. Um, we have the J1772 connector here. Seems like it's a nice connector. I like this. As you can see, if you've seen some of my other videos, I'm a bit of a connector geek. This is what you touch all the time when you charge your car. So I like it to feel like it's quality, and this does. This is a good connector. One of the better connectors that I've had here. It's a nice rubberized feel. It's got a good push button on the top. I like it. And same with the uh, Tesla wall connector with their proprietary club, uh, connector. It has a side mounting uh, connector holster. I, it works. Um, I prefer front mounting holsters. It's, it's uh, really not a big deal, but if you want to nitpick, if you're in a really tight location, sometimes people install these in between their two garage doors. There's not a lot of room in there and it's hard to holster this without hitting your hand on say like the, the, the track for your garage door opener. When you go straight in, it seems like it's a better design to me at least. 
again, nitpicking, but um, it is the same as the other connector. It has the side mounted connector holster. It comes with a 24 foot cable. Uh, we'll be doing the cable deep freeze test on this like we do on all our charging stations. You may recall if you watched my uh, Gen 3 Tesla wall connector video, uh, I was very critical of Tesla because they eliminated the 24 foot cable that they had available on the Gen 2 uh, wall connector. When they came out with the Gen 3, the longest you could get was 18 feet. And to me, that just is inadequate. Um, I believe uh, cables should have options of at least 20 feet for home charging stations to reach different corners of your garage. Uh, and uh, so that was one of the things that I was most critical of when I did my review of that unit. Uh, Tesla listened because about six months after we did that review, and I'm not saying they specifically listened to me, but uh, they listened to their customers, which is good. They then uh, added a 24 foot cable to the wall connector. So um, good on you, Tesla. That was one of my biggest uh, knocks on you when you made the, when you, when this first unit first came out. So now this unit comes standard with the 24 foot cable as it should. All right, let's take a look what else is in the box here. So we have this mounting bracket here, uh, which we're going to show you how you mount the unit next. This would go on the wall and then this would hang on it. But wait a minute, what's this? It looks like it's the body of the, uh, the charging station itself. This is an additional mounting bracket. Now, why would you use this? Um, Tesla says that you would use this if you need a, um, a top loading uh, uh, if your supply, your electrical supply is going to come in from the top of the unit, you can't bring the conduit in from the top of this unit. You can only come in from the back or the bottom as I'm coming in with the Gen 3 unit. If your conduit comes in from the above, you need to use this extra mounting plate. You would uh, mount this on the wall, then you would attach this to the back of the unit. So it would stick off the wall, geez, another uh, inch and three quarters or so, but um, you only really need this, I believe, if you have a top, uh, if your, your, your electric supply is coming from the top. Okay, and then we have a, uh, the mounting hardware. You've got some screws in here and, and some bolts, and also the two different size torque uh, bits. So they give you the, uh, the, the torque bits because that's what the screws use. It's, it's not a regular screw, it's a torque screw. So you have that, and then here's some, uh, some plugs uh, some for the knockouts on the unit, so you can plug them up and uh, the unit will be waterproof. And also the uh, owner's and installation manual, and it's in like six different languages or something, it's really thick. And that, that's, that's interesting because most charging stations, most electronic equipment now, don't, don't supply you with a, a printed user's manual. It's usually all online, so it's interesting that Tesla printed this thing up. So we're talking about the um, weatherproofing of this when I talked about these uh, knockout plugs. The unit is NEMA 3R rated, which is good for indoor and outdoor installations. However, it could be a little better. It could be NEMA 4 rated. We talk about this when we review the charging stations. The NEMA 4 rating protects charging stations against blowing uh, rain and snow. So if you live in a severe climate area. If you live in one of the northern states, you get blowing snow. If you live in an area where you get frequent driving rainstorms, you might want to consider a NEMA 4 rated uh, charging station if you're mounting it outside. If you're putting it inside your garage, it really doesn't matter. If you live in San Diego, it really doesn't matter either. But if you live in an area that gets harsh weather, we tend to lean towards recommending NEMA 4 rated charging stations and this is only a NEMA 3 rating so with this we wouldn't do our uh, dunk test where we sometimes dunk these in buckets of water or we take a garden hose and really spray the, the body of the unit really um, try to get water inside the unit we only do that with the NEMA 4 rated enclosures because this is basically saying it can't withstand that so I'm not going to put it through a test that it's not designed to withstand it doesn't mean that it's not okay for outdoor use it is okay for outdoor use it's just probably not best suited for outdoor use in areas that get extreme weather events. All right, so we have the mounting bracket mounted to the wall. Now at this point, you would have already pulled your wires through the wall if you were doing a rear entrance for the wiring. If you're going to be coming from below, you could mount the unit and then run the conduit 
and connect it that way. Now, if you were going to be using the additional mounting plate because you were coming, uh, your conduit's going to be coming from the top, you wouldn't use this plate. Uh, this replaces it. As you can see, there are these four tabs which mimic the tabs on this mounting plate. So you don't use this if you're going to use this additional mounting plate. We're not using it today. We're actually not going to be wiring the wall connector. We, we don't need it here right now. And in any event, we really don't hardwire charging stations here. We just did the Tesla wall connector. We do our reviews with plug-in units. And speaking of which, the, the Tesla wall connector isn't available on a plug-in unit. Uh, and it's a little interesting because Tesla did sell the Gen 2 wall connector for a little while with a NEMA 1450 plug. Now you could add a NEMA 1450 plug onto this if you didn't want to hardwire it. You could simply, uh, where you would bring the wires in to hardwire it from below, you could add a pigtail with the NEMA 1450 and plug it into the wall. Uh, that's probably what I would do if I was going to be really installing this to use it right now. But for purposes of the review, we really don't need to do that. So let's take a look at how this thing mounts on the wall. Basically, attach it on that cradle and then you use these four screws that Tesla supplies you with the Torx uh, bit. Now the screws are different sizes, which is interesting. There's two larger screws for the top for the two top screws and two smaller screws for the lower one along with the Torx bit. So I'm going to attach them now. I'll do a, a, a time lapse so you don't have to watch me taking my time screwing this in. But uh, let me attach it to the wall using the bits that Tesla provided. All right, she's mounted to the wall. The cable then drapes around the unit just as it does with the uh, Tesla wall connector with their proprietary connector. Let me straighten this out. Now you want to loop the cable around the unit in a counterclockwise uh, position. Well, why do you want that? So that way this thing comes around and snaps in, the connector snaps in. If you do it the other way, it's kind of awkward when you go to attach the connector to the connector holster. So here it is, as you can see, it's slightly bigger than the Gen 3 wall connector and it comes off the wall more, even with the uh, slim wall attachment unit. If we were gonna use this, it, was gonna, it would come out even further. You know, still probably average size for charging stations. There certainly are smaller, sleeker charging stations on the market today, like the Wallbox Pulsar Plus, for instance. It's tiny and it's powerful. It's one of our top rated uh, charging stations here on uh, State of Charge. So let's uh, talk about the features of the Tesla wall connector. It's a 40 amp charging station and it also has a power adjustability. And it's unique in that Tesla allows you to adjust the power in four amp increments from 12 amps all the way up to 40 amps. Some of the charging stations that have adjustable power give you like three settings, like 16 amps, 32 amps, and 40 amps, and that's it. But Tesla allows you to adjust it with a wheel inside the unit every four amps. So you could really maximize the power that your circuit can provide. I think that's a pretty cool feature. You can also power share with this unit between four different units, <laughs> if you can buy them. I, you would have had to have bought them already if Tesla truly is discontinuing this. Uh, but this can power share between four like units. I say like units because it can only power share between four of these units, unfortunately. And this is a terrible flaw in my opinion. I can't power share this with my Gen 3 Tesla connector. I think that's terrible. I think it would be a great use if you could power share with the Gen 3. That way, a household that has a Tesla and an EV from another brand could get the Tesla wall connector and this J1772 Tesla wall connector and have them power share off of one circuit. The way it is now, that's not possible. You can't power share between these two units and I think that's a shame. Other differences are the Gen 3 wall connector is a Wi-Fi connected smart charger. Now Tesla hasn't really enabled the Wi-Fi smart charging features yet, which is crazy because it's been available almost two years now and they promised a bunch of features, but we're 
we're still waiting on them. Uh, this is not a Wi-Fi connected smart charger. It's a quote unquote dumb charger. It just plugs in and charges the car. It doesn't have any smart charging features or capability. And that's probably part of the reason why these things can't communicate with each other. I just think it's a shame that we can't power share on the two Tesla products. But other than that, it's good that they can communicate with each other at least. Between four units, you can share one circuit. Uh, if you have multiple EVs or if you're, as I said, like a condo complex or a multifamily apartment building, you can power share between these. So you don't have to run individual circuits for each one. And the units will intelligently split the power between the different vehicles and not overload your circuit. If you want to open up the unit, you have to first remove a single screw at the center of the bottom of the unit. Once you do that, you have to snap off the front faceplate cover to reveal the main body of the unit. There are then six more screws that you have to remove in order to open up the inside of the unit. I'll do some time lapse here so it doesn't seem like it took me 10 minutes to remove only six screws. When you open it up, you'll notice that the front plate should be connected to the unit with that ribbon connector. You've got to plug that in yourself. It doesn't come connected. So be sure to do that before you power up the unit. It's time for our cable deep freeze test. We do this with all of the charging stations. I put them in a freezer overnight for somewhere between 12 and 14 hours. This guy's been in here for about 14 hours. And we test to see how pliable the cable is once it's been frozen overnight. We do this for people that live in the northern states. It really doesn't apply too much to people in the southern states. But if you have a charging station, particularly if you mount it outside, a lot of people have to charge outside. They don't have a garage or a place to charge their car inside. If you mount your charging station outdoors and you live in the northern states, it's gonna get really cold overnight. Now what happens is some of the cables that don't perform well freeze up and they become like frozen garden hoses. Really difficult to maneuver and it makes plugging in and unplugging on a daily basis really cumbersome. So some of the charging stations have really good rubberized cables and those are the ones that we recommend for northern climate customers. So we put the charging stations in this deep freeze freezer. It's, it's below zero. We're going to test the temperature right now and then we see how bendable the cable is and that really helps our friends in the northern states decide which charging station they want to get if they're going to mount it outside. So let's take a look at how cold it is in there right now. negative 12 degrees so that's fahrenheit so yeah it's pretty cold in there let's take a look and see how the cable performs so you can see i always wrap the cables up in tight loops and then i try to unravel them and see how manageable they are let me clip off these cable ties All right, now I'll unravel it. So this, it's not bad. Uh, it's, it's actually probably better than most. Now what you don't wanna see is it retaining this small form, you, the, the small loops. You wanna kinda of see it be very bendable and it's not bad. See, that's really not bad. Uh, this actually, I believe, performed a little bit better then when we did the Gen 3 cable, which is surprising because I figured they would be using the same cable, um, or maybe my memory just isn't correct. It is stiff, but the fact of the matter is this is such a thin cable that even if it's stiff, you can bend it. So that makes it a lot easier. So now let's, let's see how well this thing rolls back up. All right, one second. You could still see it's it's not really extremely pliable, but that's fine. Actually, um, not bad. Now it's it's not going to get any extra points, but it's not going to lose points because um, it's really not a bad functioning cable. I'm actually surprised it did a little bit better than what I expected for our cable deep freeze test. So we said earlier that the J1772 wall connector is a 40 amp home charging station. What does that translate to in miles per hour? So at 40 amps, 
it can deliver up to 9.6 kilowatts to the car. That should be good for somewhere between 25 and 45 miles of range per hour, depending on how efficient your vehicle is. Some electric vehicles can go further on every kilowatt hour. It all depends on how efficient the vehicle is. The wall connector costs $417. Well, at least when you could buy one, it was $417. And that was with shipping included. So it's actually a really good value for a 40 amp safety certified unit that's built well and has a nice long 24 foot cable. Now, as far as safety certified goes, there are a lot of charging equipment out there these days that are not safety certified. They're low cost budget chargers that you can get on say Amazon. And I can't tell you how many of my followers email me and say, you know, I got this XYZ brand and I thought it was great for the first nine months, 10 months of charge fantastically, but then the plug melted or the unit overheated and, and just stopped working. I urge my followers to please get safety certified equipment buy your home charging equipment from uh, established brands, companies that you know uh, are there, been there for a while, gonna be there, like a Tesla and some of the other brands that, that I've uh, reviewed here on the, this, this channel. Some of these no-name brands have terrible warranties. Uh, some of them are as little as six months and just don't buy electric vehicle charging equipment if it doesn't have a good warranty. Now, getting to the warranty, the interesting thing about this unit is I cannot find warranty information. It's not in the manual that they sent me. And since Tesla removed this from the website, I can't find the warranty information. Now for my ratings, I'm gonna go on the fact that it has a four-year warranty. And that's because Tesla's charging equipment generally has four-year warranties. The wall connector that I have next to it here has a four-year warranty. So I'd imagine Tesla is gonna be pretty consistent with their warranties. If I find out different, I will amend this review and the score, but we're gonna go on the basis of the fact that it has a four year warranty. And speaking of which, it's time for our rating. For that, we go to the Charger Rater. The Charger Rater is a point-based system that has five different categories, cost and value, power and weatherproofing, construction and durability, smart, non-smart, and safety certified and warranty. For the first category, cost and value, the unit gets 18 points and that's a really good score because we think it's an excellent value at $417 for a 40 amp safety certified well-built charging station. For power and weatherproofing, it gets 17 points. Next up is construction and durability and the J1772 wall connector scores 17 points in this category. For the smart non-smart category, it gets 16 points and for safety certified warranty it gets a good 18 point total now that's including three points for a four year warranty which i assume it has we don't know 100 percent certain on that but i believe tesla would be consistent across their product line for warranties if we find out that's incorrect we will amend this review and at least put a note in the description below that gives the tesla j1772 wall connector a grand total of 86 points for the Charger Rater, which translates to a score of 4.3 stars out of five. Now my personal score is 4.5 stars out of five. I give it a little bit of a better score because I think it's a really good value at only $417 for a well-made, safety certified, 40 amp home charging station uh, that can power share, has a nice long 24 foot cable and the cable's pretty good for cold weather. It's not outstanding, but it definitely is good enough to use it in cold weather areas. And also the safety certification is important. There's a lot of charging equipment coming on the market these days that's not safety certified. And quite honestly, you really should think twice about buying uh, an electric vehicle charging station that isn't safety certified. There's a lot of low price stuff coming on on Amazon now from no name brands. And you know, so often I get comments, I get messages from my followers that say, look, I bought this brand on Amazon. It worked great for 10 months. I thought it was a great deal. It was only $200 or $250. But then, you know, 10 months later, the plug melted or the unit overheated. I smelled burning, so I unplugged it. It's not worth saving a little bit of money. Get a good safety certified, high quality home charging station from a reputable company and it'll last you many years. So 
Well, that's it for the review. The only question now is, is Tesla going to bring this thing back? Uh, hopefully they do because I think it's a good product and I think it's something that people would be interested in if they're looking for a 40 amp J1772 home charging station. I definitely think it's a good value at that price. So let's see, I'm going to keep on top of this and I will put notes in our description of this video when I find out for sure if they're bringing it back or not. Hopefully Tesla will eventually respond to me. I'm not holding my breath, but let's see. I'll continue to send them emails and maybe I'll get a response at some point. So, well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget, click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, give us a thumbs up like on this video so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. And as always, thanks for watching.